Okay, great. Thanks, Peter. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with this morning's webinar. Uh, this is Bookmobile Basics or Bookmobile 101. My name is Charlie Taylor. I am one of the continuing education consultants at KDLA, um, and I will be facilitating today's webinar kind of in the background. So if you have any technical issues that you need, to, need me to look at, please go ahead and chat those in during the webinar, and I will be here to assist you with that. If you have any questions for our presenter or want to make any comments about a service, that you're, you know, anything that you want to comment about, um, please feel free to use the chat pod during the presentation. It's, it, everything always works better, and it's it's better experience for everybody if we have good discussion and sharing of ideas from everyone, um, not just our great presenter today. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the downloads that are available for today's class. The Bookmobile Basics PDF is the full-size version of the slides. As I said, that will be available at the end of the webinar, too, if you haven't had a chance to get it yet. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be posted on our archive webinars page under our brand new Bookmobile section <laughs> very soon, usually with, within a week's time, but hopefully sooner than that. And I encourage you, I've let the people know who've come in a little bit early today that we'll have, of course, a survey at the end of today's webinar, but I have a separate section on today's survey about future Bookmobile webinar topics. So if there's something that you're wondering about that you don't get today, or if you'd like to know more about something, whatever it is pertaining to Bookmobiles, please feel free to share any suggestions. Anything is welcome in that survey. I'm really trying to work to get some more Bookmobile uh, Bookmobile <laughs> webinars out there for you guys. Also outreach if you have anything in that area, but specifically today, Bookmobiles. So I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and switch us over to our presentation screen. And I'll introduce our illustrious presenter today. She is Rhonda Konzorski. I hope I pronounced your last name right. I should have asked you that before. That's okay. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can correct me. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, she is currently the assistant librarian at the McCreary County Public Library, but she spent several years as their bookmobile librarian. Um, so I've asked her today to share some of her knowledge and experiences with you guys. So Rhonda, I'll go ahead and mute my phone and again, just encourage everybody to chat in any questions or comments that you have during the webinar. Okay, thanks. So good morning, everyone. Um, as Charlie said, I'm Rhonda Kinjerski with the McCray County Public Library and I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that I've taken away from my years on the bookmobile. If you're new to the bookmobile, I think hopefully you'll find some good tips. Um, if you've been doing it a while, you may realize that you already know a lot of this, but bookmobile service is something I'm passionate about, so I'm excited to talk to you all about it. Um, this is me. I like to see the face of the person I'm listening to, so this is me. I've been with the McCrary County Public Library for 12 years, and I've been their bookmobile librarian for the last nine years and just recently um, moved into the assistant librarian position. And this is my county. Um, if you're not familiar with McCrary County, we are located in southeastern Kentucky. We're a really rural area. Our population is just over 17,000. And the majority of our county is in the Daniel Boone National Forest. So it's very rural. It's a very beautiful area. Um, our customers are very spread out throughout the county. And this is my library. We're located in Whitley City. We just have the one main branch, and then we have the bookmobile. Um, we are on Facebook and Instagram, if you'd like to follow us there. And this is our website as well. OK, okay and this is our bookmobile. Um, we got a new bookmobile in June of 2017, and this is it. Before this, we had the old bread truck style uh, that I lovingly called Bertha. And Bertha was great, but we were really excited to get the new truck. It's a 2017 Ford Transit 350, heavy-duty dual real rear wheels, which is really important for carrying the weight of the books, um, extended length, high roof van. Now, I do have more details, the purchase order, the bidding, all of that information I didn't include due to time. But if you would like any of that information, feel free to email me, and I'd be happy to share with you anything that we have um, in regard to selecting a new bookmobile. And I'll also give you some of the vendor information at the end. 
This is inside of our new bookmobile. We went with the adjustable metal shelves. Our old bookmobile had the stationary wooden shelves, so this gives you some flexibility, which really I found that we only adjusted them in the beginning. You do have that option if you ever want to change it up, but once you find what works for you, you probably won't really adjust them that often. Um, we did have some additional lighting done inside, laminate flooring, the wooden desk and cabinet, and we went with, you can barely see here, the rear door windows, which I think is important to get as much natural light in there as you can uh, with that enclosed space. So again, we have been pretty happy with our new bookmobile. Um, I was super excited when we got it because it has a backup camera, which is great. Um, also, some little perks were that the radio works, and it has a working gas gauge, which I had been working without one for several years on the old bookmobile and developed a system for that. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so I see that a lot of you all are new to bookmobile services, and that's great because I think this will be most applicable for you. Um, when you go into the bookmobile position, it can be a little overwhelming. Uh, I was a little hesitant to get into it myself when I was approached about it years ago. Uh, the main thing I worried about was driving it, but you'll find you get used to that very quickly. And actually, if you are in bookmobile and outreach services, you're really very fortunate because it's an incredible job. Um, you meet a lot of great people. You get to operate independently a lot of the time. And you get to make really good connections with your patrons. And keeping in mind that for most of those people, you're the only um, connection to the library that they have. And a lot of them really start to look forward to your visits. So being a bookmobile driver is awesome. Part of my spiel, I think, is just um, being a cheerleader for bookmobiles because I do think they're great. And I do see one question here from Peter. I'll try to catch some of those. Um, I think Charlie's going to point out some as well. Does my bookmobile have a generator? The old bookmobile that we had, the bread, bread truck version, it did have a generator. And as it got older, we ran into a lot of problems with the generator, repairs and maintenance. Um, the new truck does not have a generator. It does have a power inverter box that my computer runs off of and that the additional fluorescent lighting is connected to. So it's just a small inverter box that actually runs off of the main engine. So good question there. Um, all right, now I know that Bookmobile and Outreach Services, the way that they are divided up and the way they are ran varies a lot from county to county. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how ours is done. It might be different than yours. Um, on our Bookmobile, we serve all ages throughout the county. Um, and we also, most of our stops are actually at individual homes. We do also visit um, apartment complexes nursing homes, daycares, adult care centers, and we will go to businesses as well. Um, we had attempted going to one of the factories on their lunch break a few years ago to try to get that service started. For us, it didn't pan out, but it might work out something like that in your area. Okay, so bookmobile service, of course, is free, and it's available to all residents of our county. And I'll take the bookmobile really to any location as long as we can safely get to it. There have been a few occasions, because like I said, it's a really rural area. We have some tiny little gravel roads and cliff sides and such. If we determine we can't safely get to the house, then we'll try to accommodate by arranging a meeting place nearby, like a store or a church, or sometimes um, our customers will have relatives who live nearby and we can meet there. So we try to provide service to everyone who is interested, if at all possible. To request bookmobile service from our library, they just call the library. Um, I'd like to add a checkbox to our library card application. I just haven't done it yet, but I think that would be a great idea. That way, all new patrons signing up um, in the library will also be aware of that option and could uh, just indicate on there that they want bookmobile service. Okay, again, this will vary from bookmobile to bookmobile, um, but on our bookmobile, we serve all ages, so we try to offer 
books for all ages. We do carry movies. Um, some some do and some don't. We have a few magazines, audiobooks. For the most part, whatever materials that a patron can borrow from the library, they can get through the bookmobile. Um, we've cut way down on audiobooks. We don't have a lot of people borrowing those from the bookmobile right now. Um, we also try to carry information um, about the library services, like our calendar of events, special programs, um, and we provide reader's advisory service, which basically is just helping your customers find books that they would like. We also offer special programs on the Bookmobile, and I'll go over some of those shortly. Okay, some of our special programs. We do the summer reading program on the Bookmobile. We do this for individual families as well as daycares, and we have programs at some of the housing complexes, um, like one of our local low-income housing um, complexes. We made arrangements to use their meeting room once a week during summer reading and presented a story time and did a small craft, and then they had access to check out from the bookmobile at that time. But again, most of ours, the way the county is spread out, are just individual families. We literally pull up in the driveway, um, and they come out and use the bookmobile there. Uh, if you want more information on how we run our summer reading program on the bookmobile, there is a webinar that I presented previously with a coworker, summer reading in a rural county, that goes into that uh, in much more detail. So outreach is part of our bookmobile service. Now, I know some counties divide that up differently. You may have a separate person who handles all of your outreach story times, school visits, things like that. We are a small staff, so a lot of that goes along with bookmobile services. Um, our bookmobile driver presents weekly story times at our preschool and at Head Start um, throughout the school year and at our daycare centers year-round as well as during summer reading, we'll amp that up and do some crafts and activities at the daycares. Um, the bookmobile only covers outreach basically up through preschool, and then our children's librarian does the school visits and school outreach um, for first and second grade, and then special programs at schools are kind of divvied out amongst the um, children's department and bookmobile, and we partner together with that. We also offer um, the Thousand Books Before Kindergarten program. We offer that to individual families and daycare centers. And if you um, haven't heard of that and would like any more information, feel free to email me. But um, one of our neighboring counties, Pulaski County, uh, was doing this and having a great turnout with that. So we started it in our library and through the bookmobile as well. It's basically a program where the children are trying to get a thousand books read before kindergarten, and they just keep a little paper log for each hundred. They get a prize. They get their picture taken. Um, this is one right here. These little ones read. Uh, the family had read 200 books with them. They get a little prize. Get their picture taken. Um, once they have completed it, each year we have a photo shoot in the library. They get a T-shirt, a sign to put in their yard. So it's a great program, and we have had a few families complete that through the bookmobile as well. Um, something we like to do is try to incorporate as much of the summer reading activities on the bookmobile as we can. So when we have a costumed character, we have taken them along with us on the bookmobile to our um, apartment visits and to our daycare visits. So this was Llama Llama we had. And we will do some crafts and activities during summer reading as well. OK, so um, if you've been on the bookmobile even a short length of time, you will realize there is a lot to keep up with. Um, I'll have people you know, run into me in the grocery store and say, are you coming to my house Friday? And, I'm like, well, let me look at my schedule because really it's hard to remember all of that uh, just off the top of your head. So uh, when I took over the bookmobile, I developed just a couple little tools that helped me 
stay on track for the most part. Um, I have a monthly route calendar, which our library has six routes that we run on a biweekly basis, and a daily route sheet, and a reminder card that lets the patron know when the bookmobile will be there again. And I'll show you a sample of these. Okay, so this is an example of um, my monthly calendar. And you'll see that I have the school visits on there, um, this, the Senior Citizen Center. These two are adult care centers. These are our daycares on Fridays. And then these are the routes. Now this sheet doesn't have a lot of detail on the route. This is basically um, I give this to the staff at the front desk, and they can take a look at it if they get calls asking when the bookmobile will be on a certain route. Okay. Um, the bookmobile route schedule is published on our library's activity calendar, so that's something we produce that has all of the in-house programs, but we also list the route schedule on there. Um, we post the route schedule in the local newspaper, not in this complete form, but just summarized where we'll be each day. And then actually we have a local radio station that will announce where the bookmobile will be each day. And in a um, rural community like this, we do have a lot of people, especially seniors, that still get their information from the local radio station and newspaper, so, um, so those are good ways to reach them. Okay, now for each route, I have a route sheet. And just a note here, uh, these names and numbers have been changed for privacy. So this is not the actual information, but everything else on the route sheet um, is exactly how it looks for us, with the exception of the names and numbers being changed. So for each route day, I keep a binder, and there's a sheet. And I'll come in that day, make a copy of the sheet for that route. Um, and it tells me where all I need to go that day. Also, this is a good place to include um, notes about patron preferences. Uh, like on the back, I actually have a separate section where I'll say, um, you know, Shelley likes Harlequin paperbacks. She takes 20 each visit. Um, and that was especially helpful recently when I chained uh, the new book mobile person who took over for me. So she would have a quick reference for that. And if you have anyone filling in for you ever or taking over, uh, it's good to just have those notes and you can quickly look at it and see, um, you know, that a certain customer likes Westerns, how many they generally take. Even little things like, you know, they may keep their books a little longer, that's normal, things like that. And I have found that very helpful. Um, this is just a little reminder card that I will leave with my customers to let them know when I will next be in their area. Um, if they're not home, you know, I'll stick this on the door. And if they are, I'll just give it to them so they know. Generally, it's every two weeks, but of course, holidays and training sessions and um, special events can cause that to vary. And this I have on a sheet where it basically prints like 12 on a sheet. Um, and cut them out for that. So that is how I stayed on track most of the time. <laughs> OK, now, um, the staff lovingly calls me a bag lady because in my years on the bookmobile, I developed a reputation for taking all the bags and boxes because constantly carrying things in and out. Um, so I have found these little cubes, which were just from the dollar store, like $4 each, were extremely helpful for sorting and carrying things in and out. Um, these larger containers, you can probably get at like a container store. I lucked out and found those in a secondhand shop and used that for a return bin on the bookmobile. Um, with story time each year, you can get these tote bags. I usually just get a handful of those. and. I like to give each daycare a bag of those each summer, uh, one of those bags each summer. And then some of my families who check out a lot of books consistently 
will get one of these bags at the beginning of summer reading. And then whatever's left over, um, they're good for toting your things in and out. Now this is our bookmobile area. Um, we don't have a designated space other than this shelf, really. But this is where the things are going that we're planning to take out to customers or things that have been returned. Um, just a sorting area for that. We've talked about getting a, um, a roller. Uh, some of you may have that if you're taking a lot of things in and out to help your back by transporting those boxes and cubes on a little roller. Okay, selecting materials. And I should say you may not be carrying as much in and out depending on how your library works. Um, some bookmobiles have their own collection that they pull from. Our library shares materials with the bookmobile and the main branch. So while I have a few things that are designated bookmobile, um, they're usually duplicates or donations. But the main collection, I pull it from the main library. And because of that, we need to rotate those out pretty frequently, especially if you have customers who read a lot. For example, I have a good selection of paperbacks, but if I have you know, four or five customers who read 20 and 30 of those a month, I need to rotate those out, or I end up selecting specifically for them, hence the bags and boxes, and carrying those out. Um, so we want to carry a variety of books and movies, but tailor the collection to what your customers want and be open to requests. For example, we used to have a lot of audiobooks on there, but they weren't checking out, and um, space is precious on the bookmobile, so you don't want to use that for something that's not checking out. Um, I like to rotate a lot of the children's books, especially at the beginning of summer. And uh, when you become familiar with your customers, you'll learn their preferences, and you'll um, start to look out for the books that they would like. The circulation or cataloging staff can sometimes help with that. Like I said, we're a small library, so it's easy for me to talk to the cataloger and say, you know, I have a customer who likes um, large print westerns. Can you keep an eye out for those? Um, and then she will hold some of those for me as they come in. Also, uh, using the staff's knowledge as a resource for topics you may not be that familiar with or genres. So if I have a bookmobile customer who wants, um, let's say, modern Christian fiction, I know there is a staff member who reads a lot of that and is very familiar. So she'll help me pull things for that customer sometimes. Also, this little trick, which I know sometimes we cringe when we hear about writing in a book, but a lot of our customers, especially bookmobile, We'll put their initials um, really small inside of the front cover or the back cover of the book. And that actually makes it easier for you and them when you're selecting books. You can quickly open it and see if a certain customer has had it already. So that was a time-saving trick. OK, so promoting bookmobile services and recruiting patrons. Um, you know, customers will come and go over the years. And we're always looking for new customers. So a few ways to try to do that, you can distribute flyers at local businesses. Um, we really make a big effort to take our bookmobile to school events, such as open house, uh, literacy night, things like that, even if it is just um, setting up the bookmobile outside, standing there and talking to people as they go by, uh, telling them about the service, letting them take a look inside the bookmobile. Of course, this requires a good relationship with your school system. Um, but you know, don't be afraid to, to call and ask them if you can set up at some of those events. What we found over the years, I was really surprised at the number of people who would say, oh, I didn't know you still had a bookmobile. Um, so we want to get that information out there. Let's see. We also do tours of the bookmobile in our schools. Um, we do that with the preschool and Head Start classes near the end of the school year, and it's a good way to promote summer reading at that time. Um, also, something that I uh, started to notice all the time and like be an advocate for your bookmobile is on your library's promotional information, pamphlets, application form, 
um, anything like that, make sure your bookmobile is mentioned. And that seems like a small thing, but um, anytime I would see a flyer or a pamphlet, I'm like, bookmobile, bookmobile, we need to make sure we mention the bookmobile on there. Um, so just that's something that can be overlooked. Also, I mentioned add, consider adding a checkbox to your library card application. And let's see. Word of mouth is still the best way to get new customers. That is always true. Um, ask your patrons if they know of anyone who might be interested. With the tra uh, changeover to our new Bookmobile librarian, she has probably added on 10 new customers since she took over, and simply because she asked all the people she knows who were different people than I knew. Um, and through that, we have added on some new regular customers. Uh, Susan has a question. Do you have a backup driver if you're on vacation, sick, etc.? No. Unfortunately, I did not have a backup driver. Um, so if I were sick, we would just make every effort to notify the patrons on that route. Um, the library staff would help with that. And now that I have the list updated with all the patron information, that would be easier for them to contact someone. Um, vacation, I just scheduled the routes around it, which meant a longer time between visits. Um, that will probably be a little different now that we have a new person and I'm still here in-house. Um, I will probably be able to fill in for her now, but in the past we haven't had that luxury. Okay. Trying to gauge how fast I'm talking here. <laughs> okay, another way to make your bookmobile services known, um, participate in local events like parades. It's a great way to display your bookmobile and to show community involvement. It's also just a lot of fun. So here was our bookmobile in the Christmas parade. Also, um, for National Bookmobile Day, just do something for that. I mean, basically we just brought the bookmobile to the library with the balloons and um, had it parked out front of the library for a few hours that day just so people would notice it. Okay. Okay. So um, we offer bookmobile services again to individual homes, um, daycare facilities. Now there are a few of these like the youth correctional facilities we don't currently have that, but in meeting with other bookmobile people from the region, um, that's a big source of customers for some bookmobiles. And so you might want to look into that. And whenever you do something like that, or even with the adult day centers, you want to um, make arrangements with, with the staff when you come. Uh, it's best if they have a staff member come out with them, but that doesn't always happen. So senior citizen centers, um, private schools, even business offices um, that you can stop by and offer bookmobile service. The nursing homes I have found, um, ours in particular, that fluctuates. Sometimes I won't have any readers at the nursing home. But even if I don't, I have uh, arranged with them to take a stack of movies so that they show in their common area. So even if they're not taking books, they will take movies. And then individual people, uh, if they're spending time there, sometimes will request books. OK. Bookmobile maintenance. Um, this is just one of those things that's not on the top of my mind usually, but something that you do need to pay attention to. The better care you take of your bookmobile, the longer you'll have service with it. So be sure to stay up to date on maintenance, oil change, fluids checked, brakes checked. Um, that's another nice thing about the new truck is it will flash and tell me that it's almost time for an oil change. So that's helpful. Um, but you can check your owner's manual for maintenance schedule recommendations. And uh, a little tip is just have the phone numbers handy for your mechanic and your local towing company should you need it. Hopefully you won't, um, but we have had to have the older truck towed a couple times. So just keep those numbers handy on your bookmobile or in your phone. 
Walk around your bookmobile to check your tires before each route. Now, this is something I was told early on in a bookmobile training, and you get in a rush and you don't do it. Um, and recently, I was at a stop in town, and um, somebody else from a local business was going by, and they stopped to let me know that one of my outside tires was low. So just take a quick check of those things before you head out on the road. Also, as the weather changes, especially if we get into winter, that can affect your tire pressure. So you'll want to just take a quick check of that. Okay. I see more discussion about the filling in and the substitutes over there. If you can do that, that's great. But the thing I find with the bookmobile is there are so many details that you have and so much that you're doing. If something comes up even to where we need to reschedule a route, it can be difficult to even do that because your time is usually very packed. Um, so if something comes up like illness of the driver or mechanical problems, sometimes we just have to apologize and say, you know, we'll catch you on the next scheduled route. Um, as much as we would like to make those up, time just doesn't always permit. And usually the bookmobile customers are pretty understanding with all that. Also, if I know that it's going to be a longer time between routes, like for holidays or vacation, um, I'll offer them the chance to take more items. I'll say it's going to be an extra week, so if you need to take extra, please do so. Okay, let's see. I think I may be talking too fast and going through this too quickly. All right. Um, as a bookmobile driver, you may find over time that you feel a little isolated from the rest of the library staff um, because you do operate independently a lot. You're basically running your own little mobile library. Um, and honestly, like inside staff don't always understand everything that goes into it. And that's okay, but that's just how it is because they're not working directly with it. So it's a great idea to get support from other people who do understand your position and do the same thing. Um, you can do this by interacting with Bookmobile and outreach staff from other libraries because no one else understands your job better than they do. Um, fortunately, in our region, we have a core group of counties that have been having quarterly Bookmobile and outreach meetings since before I started in the position. And I really look forward to this. It can be an opportunity to earn CEUs if you schedule some type of programming. But really, the best thing about it is just being able to meet with and talk to um, other people in your position. You can learn about things that they've encountered and how to deal with it, or just pick up tips of the trade. So if you have that type of meeting in your region, um, or even we've talked about, because the regions have expanded so much, having um, a smaller breakdown sub-region, just the counties that are closest to you. If you don't have that, I encourage you to look into trying to get that going. It's really beneficial. Um, also, you can join KDLA's Bookmobile and Outreach Listserv and attend conferences and training sessions whenever possible. Again, I know time constraints um, are an issue with the bookmobile, but if you have an opportunity to attend those, it's always good to network with other people in your field. Okay, and like I said, I've been fortunate with this. When I was new to the bookmobile, I had several people in the region who I could call or message and say, you know, hey, this is an issue I'm dealing with. How do you handle this? Um, so, okay, let's see where we are. Okay, so here are some random tips. Like I said, I could talk about bookmobile service all day because I am passionate about the importance of that. So gathering my thoughts was a little hard, but these are some random things I've learned along the way. Um, when setting up a new stop, ask them if UPS and FedEx can get their trucks in there. Now this may not be an issue in your area, but in our area it is with small driveways and um, curvy roads and uh, cliff sides and things like that. So when I'm talking to a new patron, because uh, I always talk to them on the phone before going out, I will ask them, is there room to get the bookmobile in and out? Um, and does UPS or FedEx come there? Because if they can do it, then we can probably do it. 
Um, in our area, we cannot rely on GPS. It doesn't know half of the roads. It will take you all around the world. So it's important to get detailed directions and landmarks. Um, in a lot of areas, we don't seem to be great with having uh, road signs. So it's important to get, you know, you're going to turn next to the gas station and go three miles. There's a white fence, red house, things like that. Um, if you have patrons that you see a pattern that they are not home a lot of the time, or they are really far away on your route, um, it's a good idea to call or text them just to make sure they're going to be home before you take your time to go out there. And we don't have a hard, fast rule on this, but in general, if I've gone, you know, two or three times, three times, um, and the customer hasn't been there, then I'll call and, and or leave a note saying, please let me know when you would like me to come back for a bookmobile service. Um, Okay, a question over here, outreach conferences in Kentucky. We used to have a bookmobile and outreach conference, but I think that was discontinued a few years ago and kind of incorporated with the main conference. Um, they, the, they have tried to offer some bookmobile topics at the main Kentucky Library Conference. I could be wrong about that. Um, okay, depending on the length of your route and the area, you may need to make sure that you pack some snacks and healthy ones would be good, but bookmobile drivers tend to kind of grab what they can get. Take an opportunity to get up and stretch between your stops. Um, okay, this is something that we've recently become more aware of. Um, watch for bugs in your library returns. Unfortunately, bed bugs have become a big problem everywhere. Um, roaches, even lice. So I know you get in a hurry when you're checking your items in, but if you can, just you know, quickly glance inside the covers um, because that is an issue that comes up, unfortunately. We have started carrying the large Ziploc bags, I think it's like a three gallon size, um, to place the items in if you do find bugs in your books. And then of course, the next issue with that, depending on how your library handles it, will be talking to your customer and determining what to do from there. Okay, and this, I have a dear friend who's also a bookmobile driver who we talked about this recently. You don't realize in the beginning how attached you may get to your patrons. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, you lose them. They pass away or they move on. And that can be really difficult and just know that that's perfectly normal. Um, that that is really going to hurt, but we just keep moving forward and try to uh, be a highlight in other people's lives. Okay, on those long routes, you will also want to become familiar with places to make restroom stops. That may seem silly, but if you are on the road for four hours out in the middle of nowhere, um, you're going to want to know that that convenience store is a good place to stop for a snack and a bathroom break. Also, um, it's a good idea to keep incident report forms on your bookmobile and inform your supervisor or director of any issues you encounter. This can be accidents that happen. It could just be, um, let's see, unhappy customers, but specifically uh, accidents. Someone falls on your bookmobile or things like that. It's important to document that. Okay. Okay, I may be a little early, but um, this is our old bookmobile. This was Bertha, and she ran for years and years. Um, over here, under this panel, was our generator that the air conditioning and the inside lights ran off of. Um, so I guess wrapping it up is just, again, my cheerleading. Just know that bookmobile and outreach librarians are really special people, and the job that you do is really important. Um, and you've probably seen this if you've been doing it for any time at all. Like, for some patrons, you really may be the only person they interact with for days at a time. Um, for some children, you may be the only person that can pay a little bit of attention to them while you're there and make them feel special, especially with kids. I think they really appreciate that the bookmobile is coming to see them and makes them feel special. Um, and 
just keep up the great work. Again, the job you do is really important. I hope that you uh, will find something helpful in this. I know it is very basic, but that's what we were covering today. So I'd be happy to answer any questions for you that I can. OK, how do you determine going to stops where very few people get on? OK, um, well, for me, that's not as much of an issue because I don't do a lot of community stops. Now, that, I know, does vary from area to area. Um, if you're talking about like an apartment complex, uh, we will continue to go even if it's only one person. Um, but I don't have community stops per se, like meeting at a certain church and people come to there to meet you, just because I don't think that would work out for us, for people to have to, to travel there. So if it's like an apartment complex, again, we will continue to go there even if it's just one person. Okay, looking through the questions here. All right. Oh, let's see. I think I do also have. Okay, so this was just the, the vendor information, if you were wondering about any of that. Um, we purchased our bookmobile in Somerset from Alton Blakely. If you are looking into getting a new bookmobile, make sure that you all find out about fleet pricing, um, and that can save you some money. So look for fleet pricing, talk to the dealership about that. You can get that information from uh, the State Library. The inside, the shelves, and the desk, and the subfloor were done by Dale Stevens in Frankfurt, and I know he's done a lot of the bookmobiles in our area. Um, and then the laminate flooring was done by a local contractor, and the vinyl artwork was done by um, a sign company, Superior Signs, in Somerset. So, but Dale, uh, Dale does specialize in bookmobiles. He's been doing it for years and years, so he's a good place to start. Do you offer programs, nursing homes assisted with? Okay, good question, Terry. Um, we don't offer programs at the nursing homes or assisted living homes right now. We just offer the checkout of books and movies. Now, I know that is different from um, talking to other bookmobile librarians in our region. Some of them do uh, projects and activities at the nursing home stop. So that's definitely something that some places do through their bookmobile, but we do not. Okay, that's all of mine. Well, thank you all for joining me today. I hope that you found that helpful. Oh, who did the outside of our bookmobile? Um, Superior Signs in Somerset did the outside of ours. Now, I know there are a lot of places you can go for that, and a lot of counties go with the wraps, um, where they wrap your entire bookmobile. We didn't go with that. We just went with the um, vinyl design. And that's just a preference, whatever you all decide to do with your library. But the wraps are popular as well. You're welcome. So if you think of any other questions, or like I said, if you want any more information on our summer reading or the process for getting our bookmobile, um, feel free to email me. Thank you so much, Rhonda. We really appreciate all that information you've shared today. Um, I want to encourage people to go ahead, while we're wrapping up, to go ahead and continue to chat in questions. We can circle back to, to Rhonda if you think of anything while I'm just sort of going through the, the final slides here. Um, Rhonda mentioned contacting us if you had questions about certain things uh, that will, might come from the state. Uh, if you need to ask KDLA a question about bookmobiles, I've uh, typed in Beth Milburn's email address there in the chat, chat box. So feel free to contact her. Uh, we also want to thank the Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS, for their sponsorship of this webinar. And want to encourage you to follow us on social media if you don't already. We are on Facebook and Twitter. And we have a couple of um, webinars coming up in the next couple of weeks, so feel free to go ahead and register for those. There's still plenty of time. Got a real interesting one on Thursday about libraries and the First Amendment, and then an oral history one in early November, and e-rates is coming as well. <laughs> 
So um, if you didn't get a chance to download the full slides, but full size version of today's slides, you can do that now. It's in the downloads pod in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Just click on Bookmobile Basic PDF and then click the download file button below it. And if you need to contact uh, Rhonda, if you have questions or want to email her, her information is on there as well as some contact information for us here at KDLA. I'm going to go ahead and open a survey on everyone's computer. It might pop up in front of the webinar screen, so you can just minimize it if that happens and come back to it when we get finished. But as I mentioned before we started, I do have a, a specific question on there about Bookmobile webinars in the future. So if there's something that you um, want to know more about that you heard today, please let us know in that survey or something that you'd like to have more discussion about or a totally different area of Bookmobile service. Please chat any of that stuff then into the survey. Let me know. And also, if you would like to be a webinar presenter, that would be a good place to tell us too. Um, I'll be looking to expand our Bookmobile webinar offerings here over the next few months. And Rob, it looks like we have gotten another question in. So I'll turn Okay, from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Um, is there a certain program I use to make my calendars? No, I'm kind of on the low-tech side with all of that still. So that is just done in a Word document by just putting a chart in it. Um, now I know that you can use Publisher. It has some like pre-formatted calendars. But mine is just a chart uh, put into a Word document. You're welcome. Okay, it looks like the questions are slowing down. So I also wanted to remind everybody that the webinar was recorded. So if you need to come back and review anything or if you want to share it um, with any of your colleagues or anything like that, you can, you'll be able to do that. It will be posted on our archive webinars page within the next few days under the brand new Bookmobile section. Um, so thank you again to Rhonda for being our presenter today. I know that you must be so busy learning a new job and your new position, but oh, you're welcome. I love yeah. talking with Mobile, so uh, that's why we asked you. We know she's passionate about it. So thanks. Absolutely. Thank you to everybody for attending today, and to those of you who are starting new services, or maybe you're a new bookmobile driver, um, good luck, <laughs> and we uh, encourage you to reach out to Rhonda and those, uh, those other drivers who might have a little more, a little more experience, um, please always feel free to reach out for help. Yes, she is awesome, Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Please don't forget to take that survey, and when you're ready to exit, you can just click that X in the top right-hand corner of the screen. All right. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thanks, Rhonda, very much. You're welcome. Bye. Phew.